In this episode of the On That Net Show, we're going to be exploring how source generators are enabling us to write more performant logs in the new versions of the logging firmware that'll be coming out. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you stay tuned and check it out. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the On.Net Show. My name is Cecil Phillip, and in this episode, we're going to be exploring the world of source generators with the new logging frameworks that are going to be available in the .NET 6 timeframe. And I have my good friend Miriam here who's going to talk to us all about it. So Miriam, I'm really happy that you're back. And you know, I know you and I have done some videos before, but for folks that may have not have seen those videos, why don't we start off with you telling us a little bit about who you are and what do you do? Sure. I work in the .NET team, and um, we've been uh, working mostly on the, like I've been working mostly on the logging uh, APIs and uh, adding features for the 6.0 timeframe. And the what I wanted to demo today was a demo for the logging source generator. And um, yeah, I prepared a little demo here. I also have a link to it to the repo that I prepared that if anyone wants to dig deeper into it. But yeah, whenever you're ready, we can kind of. Sure, start. well, why don't we start off with this, right? So in your last, you know, in your last episode that you were there, we talked about some of those enhancements and some of the things that the team was looking yeah. at to make yeah. logging a little bit better for developers. Yeah. And now one of these features that we're talking about today is being able to use source generators. So mm -hmm. I guess my first question to you would be, why are we using source generators for logging? Like, tell me about what are some of the motivations that the team had to invest in doing something like that? Sure. So there are, if someone has like their, I don't know, they're preparing a little demo, it's a demo that uses a little bit of logging or they have a production uh, code uh, application that they need to have logging in it anyways. There are, if you dig into the documentations, you'll find that there are two different approaches that people tend to take when they're writing logs. They will either use APIs that are called, let's say, log information, log debug, log critical, and uh, otherwise, they, if they want, but there is a, some issues with those uh, APIs that I'll go over that uh, some are easy to write, some other ones are uh, more performance, but the new feature that we have with logging, which uses source generators, is uh, it helps hide away some boilerplate code that comes with writing performant logs, and it helps only attract user developers' eyes to code that needs to be maintained over time, and they don't need to care about like code that is not, you know, um, that's not as relevant for us to be paying relevant. attention to. Yeah. All right, that so, makes sense. Why don't we Why don't we take a look at your um, your Visual Studio instance? And yeah. I think it'll be really interesting to see what some of these new enhancements look like with these new source generator features for logging. Sure, sounds good. Uh, what I have prepared, I have this um, demo application, which I already I'll have uh, a link to it in. Uh, this uh, page for uh, like the whole demo. And then the way I started this application, I use the uh, minimal APIs and that's why probably you'll see the program CS looks a bit different. And to get access to this, you'll need .NET 6 RC1 and after. And uh, what I added to it, I added my own little custom formatter, console formatter, which we talked about earlier in another episode. And with that, I have like the way I have this, I kind of have this prefix as if I want to, and then the logs will look in a specific indentation that I like. But this is uh, like not necessarily, doesn't necessarily have to do with source generators. So about the source generators and the logging topic today, the way I wanted to talk about it is to go through those three different approaches that I told you exists for logging. The one that m most people have seen before is, uh, the API such as log information. And with this, like the good thing about writing these logs this way is that everything you want to know about your log message is written down in one place. So you have, in this case, 
case you read this and you'll know what's happening. You have a you want to write you want to log in information with this message template and name, argue, age, hometown, all of this will be passed as arguments there. And this is the event ID. So there are issues to it. So every time someone wants to, uh, every time this log information gets called, the, uh, for the very least, this message template has to be reparsed over and over, which is an overhead performance. So to get around that, if uh, uh, what developers usually tend to do is they write their own actions, they uh, define their own actions that take these uh, message templates and I'll show you how it usually looks like. And they would have to write, to, to get performant code, they would have to write this snippet here, which is not ideal because they have to, it's not easy to get right the first time even like because you have to make sure all of these uh, types match here or like all that message template will end up here and like all the event ID and all of that. And so imagine having multiple like 20 logs in your entire application and for each of them you have to write this much code. And the goal for the source generator is to hide away as much as it can but leave the important pieces of information for the future. If you want to change this to critical later, you have that information handy. So the third approach, which is the new approach, which is the uh, one with source generator is like, by the way, all these three statements write this identical same log, but mm -hmm. the way the, the, the way it's written or like implemented is different. So the third way you'll see is well, the source generator is, I'll show you in the same file, uh, this is all you need to write, which is um, you define a partial method and you pass down uh, all of your logging specific um, information, the event ID, the information, the message template goes here. And all and with that message with that partial method, you're you're able to provide all the types of your uh, arguments in your message template. So for example, name will be string, age will be integer, and that's all you need to write. And then it, it's really easy to, easier to maintain. The implementation gets hidden away from the developer, but if someone wanted to check, um, this, is, this is all of the things that the source generator is helping us not write, and it, and it will be in the generated portion. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about, you mentioned a few times about performance, right? Like performant logs. Yeah. And yeah. looking at that second um, example that you show where you, I think it had like log method dot define or something of that nature inside of your Visual Studio. Yeah. The reason that that's performant, and I'm assuming is because there has to be some compilation of the template, right? And as you compile the template, we want to make sure that we do that once and not multiple times. So hence yeah. why we're finding that section. But like you're yes. saying, that second way of doing it is a little bit tedious and it, you know, it's, you know, everyone doesn't want to do that all the time. So hence we have that first way where you do like log information, log fatal, but that way now, that way is, is, is not as um, performant because again, that's compiling the template every time. So now mm -hmm. that's third option that you showed us combines both, you know, by using source generators, we're able to generate that code that's going to be able to, you know, um, create a more performant log because we're not doing as much, you know, um, string gymnastics with compiling templates. And now I could just say log dot whatever the name of my method is. But now all of that stuff would have already been done for me in the background. And now I'm going to have, like you said, like more performant logs. That's that's precisely true. So as you said, uh, the the similarity between the two latter approaches are that they're both compile time. Uh, uh, logs, uh, logs, uh, because um, the, basically it, the new approach is just doing the entire thing for us that we had to do, um, but we're just writing less code. It's easier for us to kind of manage all of the methods. We can just like have plenty more logs like you see here and like everything in one go and all you need to all your eyes sees is just like information you need to care about like later on if you need to change the message the level that if anything you need to change that's it just gives you the compact view of all you need to care about awesome i like it i like it so a couple of questions i have for you 
Now, mm-hmm. I know we're talking about this is, is something that's going to be coming out within that .NET 6 time frame. Um, yeah. w- w- like, who is this for? Like, who could use this? Like, do I need to be on .NET 6 to use this? Do I need to be running ASP.NET to use this? Or can, mm-hmm. can anyone use it? Or is it just .NET standard? Or, you know, can yes. I use it in any application? Like, like who is this for? So uh, if in the case where I, uh, if someone wants to use an, wants to have an ASP.NET application and targeting 6.0, it already comes with that. Uh, but if they otherwise, if they want to have like a console application or if in any case they don't want to, uh, they want to have a specific, like in net standard, for example, they would have to use this, the 6.0 package uh, of Microsoft extensions logging. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and that makes sense too, right? Yeah. Because it would be a .NET standard package, right? Not just like a, a, a core package, but it'll be a .NET standard package. And as long as, you know, whatever your application is using supports that version of .NET standard, we should be good to go, right? Yes, the the, the package, uh, well, the, the first package version that the source generator logger was available for was .NET 6.0 preview 4 and onwards. And, but then you wouldn't have to care about the package version if you're, for example, trying to have an ASP.NET application targeting 6.0. It already comes with it as part of the SDK. Awesome. So then the next question I want to ask you now, how much do I need to know about source generators to be able to play with this? Like, do I, do I need to know how source generators work or is all I really need to do is just apply that attribute to the top of it and then magic happens right and like I the, just the very the yeah the very uh like hello world sample sort of like is that like all you would necessarily need to do is to define your partial method that uh takes the logger and then you just add the attribute as you just mentioned the logger message attribute and place this information to it like the message template the information and Level and there's not not no there's no specific uh, extra piece of knowledge you need about source generators per se to know to be able to use this. Just know that if you have this portion in your code, then the implementation of Hello World will be done by the source generator as soon as it sees this uh, attribute, and basically it will end up uh, implementing the, the Hello World wherever this is. Um, Hello, yeah. So hello, it will implement the the you know the body of this method, and awesome. but if someone wanted to go deeper into source generators um, and they write their own source generators, that's like a that's also possible. There's this uh, source generators cookbooks if someone wants to write their own source generators. So for us, we added something specifically for logging. That's great. And if folks are interested, um, we'll have, you know, this link and a bunch of other links, you know, down inside the description for this video. So if you're mm-hmm. interested in learning more about source generators or even logging, you know, we'll have some information for there for you as well. I do want to ask you, if folks are, are interested in learning a little bit more about what's happening with logging, what are some good places for them to maybe reach out to you or the team to learn about what's going on? If there is any uh, feature requests or issues that they want to add, there is uh, the .NET runtime repository that they can look to and add issues and feature requests on, uh, over there. Uh, there's right. another thing also I wanted to add if there's enough time, which is really cool to share, is um, like the usages of the logger message attribute we're already having in like ASP.NET Core as well. Like some pieces of code and logic has changed to use this feature as well. And I'm just gonna uh, increase the resolution here. So um, there are cases, and this is like a good sample where there would be cases where someone's trying to log something and they have a, a expensive piece of logic that they may, might be allocating or anything and they don't wanna make sure it doesn't happen all the time and they wanna guard it, guard it with like an is enabled check. And the way they can do it using this source generator uh, logger is they would add this skip enable check true to the logger message attribute. And what it would do is it tells the generator to skip writing this line of code 
in its own source generator. And instead, it will rely that the developer itself will make sure to add it themselves. So in other words, as a developer, I can add this, set it to true to tell the source generator, don't worry about writing this line of code because I'm going to guard my own logic um, myself. And it, it, over here, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. yeah, it's always good to see when we use some of our own stuff, right? Because folks are always like, oh, Microsoft, you put out all of these really cool and interesting things. So being able to have these examples where they show like we're actually using some of the stuff that we build is always great. Um, but that being said, Miriam, I, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. I thought that was a great example of some of the things that you and your team are working on for logging and some of the things that we can expect in that .NET 6 timeframe. So um, that was that was great. I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, we had to have you come back again sometime soon to talk about some more stuff. And Thanks for having me. Yep. No, for sure. And if all of you that are watching, thank you so much. This has been another episode of the On.net show where we learned about how source generators have been able to give us some more performant logging messages. So, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Bye.